Huh. Hey folks, it's Dane here at Jonah Guitars, and uh, I just uh, come across one of these for the first time, so I thought I would uh, share it with you folks. This. This is a brand new, uh, I mean, I don't know the year, but it's just brand new to my, my client. Um, so it's a Taylor GS Mini. It's got uh, Koa uh, top, back, sides. It is a laminate on the back and sides, and I just stuck a mirror in it to make sure that the top was, was solid. And the top is uh, one piece Koa. Um, the neck is gonna be mahogany from the looks of it. And uh, that's a mahogany with a scarf joint. Yep, which is right right here where you can see that changing color. Uh, yeah, up into here. Anyway, that's not a, a, a matter. I think scarf joints are just fine if they're done properly and I'm sure Taylor does them well. Um, this has a little um, uh, sound, what is that called, output? Jack pickup, there it is, a little pickup. Uh, that comes with it, it's designed uh, by uh, Taylor. It's, uh, I've always been impressed with Taylor's electronics, when they, especially when they conspired with uh, Bose on their uh, uh, expression system, I believe it was called. Anyway, so the complaint is that he, uh, he has a rattle a little bit of a fret buzz uh, on the B and the E string out here and I, I know that we both have different playing techniques because he played it and it rattled and I played it with him there and I didn't really hear any buzzing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through it and check. Uh, check my, my nut height at the first fret, check my, my relief in the neck, uh, the action height, all that sort of thing. One thing I did just from a visual inspection while he was here is uh, determine that the saddle is uh, quite a bit lower on the treble side, the high E, than it is on the, the bassy. So um, after I check it all out, uh, I may end up lowering the saddle a tad uh, on the bass side and then introducing a little more relief into the neck to, just to get a little more clearance here, but at the same time bringing the bass down on the saddle so that I retain my uh, string clearance on the 12th fret or string action. So I'll check all that stuff out and I'll try to, you know, reduce this video to just the highlights rather than every little painstaking thing that goes on here. So I'll let it run and then I'll try to just edit out all the stuff we don't need. All right, I just got a new capo I'm gonna try out. And I haven't used one of these before, so. I have, I'll have a lot of different guitars come through the shop. There we go, and so the two I've been using I, are harder to adjust, so I thought I would get this one, and it seems like it's gonna be great. You can't even see it, doesn't matter. It's the Planet Waves. Uh, capo with the little wheel on the back so you can set the tension. Uh, well, it says to Dario on it, but it's the same as the Planet Waves. Uh, one of those two companies makes it, I'm sure, and supplies it to the other. And so, get my feeler gauges out, fret the guitar. We'll go back to wide, fret the guitar at the body, and then we'll check at the seventh or so fret, somewhere in there, and see what my my relief is. I usually like to know where I'm at, and then I adjust accordingly, and not to a number specifically, but to the results. So I am actually low uh, for my typical 12 thousandths. So let's see where we're at. All right, I'm even. I'm even pushing it up at eight thousand. So that's pretty, pretty flat neck for an acoustic guitar. 
Let's check the high E. And I'm, I'm pushing that E string up as well. So I'm going to definitely bring some relief into this. I want to find out now where the um, where this string height is at the 12th fret. I don't have my Randy. Did you notice I just had to spin spin my gauge? Uh, I got to get my visor out. It looks like it's already a little higher than than uh, six uh, four sixty fourths, which is four or five four typically on electric and five typically on acoustic. See where we're at. We're at six on the fatty and we're right at four, maybe just a fuzz under four on the high E. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm definitely at this point I'm going to take a little meat off the base side of the bridge saddle and uh, and bring the relief up a little bit. So I'm going to leave going to leave the treble side where it is right now um, on the bridge. I'm not sure you yeah you can see it. But so I'm going to leave the treble side alone. Get into the frame here. Leave the treble side alone. Bring the bass side down a little bit. Um, probably I have I, I think I have enough. It looks like I have plenty of room there. Probably bring that base side down about three sixty fourths uh, or so, maybe a little lower than that. Uh, he may have to live with just a tad higher action there than I would like, but it's already at six, which is higher than I like. It's not gonna it's not gonna be higher than that when I'm done, I don't think. So we should be good. Uh, another I haven't checked the tuning on this. Uh, since it's been sitting. Another thing that... Oh, that's way up. Yeah, that ease down. So, um, I'm going to fix the tuning. Alright, back. The um, thing he was telling me was he thought this was a little bassy. He also, well, he also just changed the strings. That's why they're probably so far out. But he told me it was a little bassy and that uh, uh, in the mix with the band that he's playing with it, uh, it just kind of gets lost in all that uh, all the other stuff that's in the lower end so we're going to experiment with some pins and see what happens there just uh, actually just text another guy that I did some work for the guild neck reset that uh, I don't know if it's been up yet or not I can never remember where I'm at in video series um, he, uh, he went through and changed his pins out because uh, as we were changing his saddle material he found that his guitar was getting too bright. Uh, this guy's got just the opposite thing. So, But uh, he says the ebony pins with the other guy are the, the warmest you know and or slash muddiest if that's where the, it seems to be affecting your guitar. But that was with a bone, that was with a bone saddle, and then uh, we changed his guitar to a Barbera, uh, and it's a composite uh, saddle with the um, uh, the pickup built right into the top side of the thing rather than being under the saddle, and um, so he found that the Ivoroid uh, were uh, were brighter. And then actual plastic, the good old cheap factory plastic stuff that most guitars come with, is actually the, the brightest of all of them. So I'm going to recommend to this fella that he try some Ivoroid pins and see if that is more in his liking tone-wise. Uh, and to be quite honest, before this experiment that this other fella did, I really didn't think that pins would make an awful lot of difference. I, I tend to think a lot of things that float around YouTube and the internet are uh, more voodoo than anything, but uh, I respect this other guy's opinion for sure. 
on tone. I think he's got a lot better here than I do. So uh, I'm going to make that recommendation uh, to this guy, and we'll see. We'll, maybe he'll experiment, and I'll get more information on that. But so the way things set right now, the plan is, the plan is to uh, go ahead and pull the strings off of this. Uh, I'm going to loosen the truss rod and uh, give the neck a bit more relief. I'll probably do that first, actually, and then uh, and then pull the strings and uh, file the saddle down a bit to uh, where we need to get more in the range for uh, a good good string height. Um, yeah. Oh, I didn't check my my string height of the net yet, but I will do that. Um, I'll show you how I do that real quick, just so there's um, in case there's a question on that. You can measure and 18 thousandths to 16 thousandths isn't a bad way to go uh, on that fatty. Just measure without doing anything to the string, just leaving it where it's at and put a feeler gauge in there and see how, where it's at. And it should be between 16 and 18 thousandths. Generally speaking, that's about where you end up if you use this other method I'm going to show you. And then on the on the high east side, I would say you drop down a little more than that even and be in the probably 12 thousandths range, just just a, a little bit. Then you basically just want to line the rest of these strings up so that they're you don't stumble over over a string getting from one to the other because you've got one that's farther away from the fret. So rather than worrying about how exactly far they are from the fret at that point, I like to kind of line the tops up so that you don't have something to trip over. Uh, that's kind of my philosophy on setup, really, is uh, you know, if the guitar gets in your way when you're trying to play it, then the setup is definitely not working for you. Um, so yeah, string height at the net and the radius and the radius at the uh, at the fretboard that's set by the radius of the bridge and the electric or acoustic, you want to make sure that your your radiuses are very close, otherwise you're tripping over strings as you try to play. And certainly can't play fast uh, if you're tripping over strings. I can't play fast, period, but that's that's entirely a different story. Uh, all right, so the way I typically check is I just push the string down at the third fret, and then I just see what kind of clearance I have over the first fret. And I've probably got a little more clearance than I want there, although it's not bad. and. Uh, it's hard to kind of explain what that is. I've actually had guitars come into the shop that I do that and the string is actually laying on the first fret and unless that string is buzzing, no big deal. I mean, it's certainly, um, if it's not buzzing, it's, then it's not a problem. So uh, sometimes you'll have one that's so close that it's rattling without being pressed at all. And in that case, then you do certainly have a problem. But so I'm going to measure this real quick. Actually, you see right there, it's quite a bit higher than 18. And I'm still, I'm still not hitting that. So yeah, I'll do a little nut work on this thing and probably, let's look at 24. It's actually even just a fuzz higher than 24. So. We'll need to do a little bit of uh, net filing here. And then now the, the high E string is hitting at 24. And let's go down to 20. I think it's going to be hitting at 20 as well. Now it's right about perfect at 20. Let's say 21 is where it's at. So you've got over 24 on the fat E and 21 or 2 on the high E. So. Uh, I'm just going to make those adjustments. Uh, you've seen me and plenty of other people file on nuts and trim saddles down. I've got, if you need to find one, I don't know how to index it in the video. Um, uh, I, I know I've got videos of, of sanding or and or filing bridges, bridge saddles down uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, but I'm going to make these adjustments and see how it comes out. All right, so we're back. Uh, in the time that I was away, I, um, I filed the net in so that it is now uh, right down there where we talked about. 
believe that the fatty is just under 18 and the high is right around there as well and then I just even them up so I said you don't trip over them. I also lube the, uh, the nut um, being a splayed uh, string spacing on the headstock uh, rather than straight pull. Uh, I always like to lube those and uh, uh, this was originally just filed straight off, which is like what I like to do on the, the uh, G and D strings. And um, rather than file them at an angle, because I think it just compounds the issue of tuning instability, or actually tuning pinging, you know, what happens with that as you go. Uh, you creep it up and it's going ping. Yeah, on the way. Anyway, so none of that. Uh, I did take the bridge saddle out and lowered it. Uh, accordingly let me see I I know it's as lower lower than it was but let me take a look and make sure what it actually turned out at should have done that before huh I'm sitting right at 460 fourths I could pretty much tell that uh, and I don't think I took a lot off of the high yeah I was trying not to I uh, might have taken a little no it's still at four so both the fat and the and the skinny ease are uh, down at 4 64th. I'm not getting any rattling anywhere that I'm aware of. I uh, I happen to have a set of the cheap uh, plastic pins, uh, which I think has indeed made it a little brighter overall. Um, I'll have to roll the video back actually from the opening to this part to see what I think. So I probably played an E chord with it. Uh, So, a little Taylor GS Mini. I think that we have accomplished what we were after. Lowered the, uh, the Fat E by 2 64ths, which makes it much more playable. My string action is uh, tight 12 uh, thousandths, uh, around the fifth, seventh fret, rather. Uh, so there's that, that much, I mean, relief in the neck, and then the string action is 4 64ths, as I just said. Nut's been tuned in a little bit, shave the bridge, change the pins. We're going to run it over to the guy that owns it. He's just around the corner at a rehearsal and uh, let him see what it sounds like in the mix. Um, and uh, that's going to work for him. These pins aren't settled in right there. I got some high pins there. So if he likes those, I'll, uh, I'll fit those and, and get them to where they fit right. So Taylor GS Mini, uh, Koa. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great day.